Uh, so listen, anyone who is a part of the power scaling community or even has a general idea of what power scaling is, probably knows that attack potency and destructive capability, also known as AP and DC, are fundamental concepts that describe what many would consider to be one of, if not the most crucial metric in power scaling, the strength of a character. However, I'm of the belief that the definition of these concepts do not fully encompass the idea of one's physical strength. Furthermore, they do not accurately represent a crucial aspect involving the scaling of physical power, said aspect seemingly being overlooked or hardly talked about. Thus, I'm making this video to shed light on this overlooked aspect. The way I'll do it is by first explaining AP and DC, before going on to explain their limited ability to discern a concept I'll refer to as attack power, which will be abbreviated as ATP. Following this, I will finalize by explaining the concept of ATP, which will compensate for the limited ability of AP and DC to fully describe the idea of attack power. Do note that I am not saying that the introduction of ATP as a concept will create a holy trinity of concepts that can fully and comprehensively describe any and all application of physical power. Rather, I am proposing a solution to a specific problem I have observed with the application of the definitions of AP and DC in representing physical power. This is the first video in a series I refer to as a power scaling guide, whose purpose is to educate not only the layman but also those experienced in power scaling so that they become more knowledgeable on the more nuanced aspects of the topic. This is not to say that I possess absolute knowledge on the topic, nor that the knowledge I possess is infallible. Rather, it is to express what I believe to be true in an argumentative manner. If my beliefs are justified, then I believe people should be aware of them not only because it will guide their future participation in the hobby of power scaling but also to point out what I consider to be the fallibility of beliefs held by some power scalers. If my beliefs are flawed, then I desire those who see them differently than me to vocalize their opposition, preferably by DMing me on IG so we can set up a time for a voice call. Anyways, I believe that's more than enough rambling to introduce the topic of discussion so let's actually get into discussing it. So that my argument and reason for it is understood, we must first understand how AP is defined. Generally, people define attack potency as the amount of energy an attack possesses. For example, let's say a character is able to punch so hard that they can not only halt but fully destroy an asteroid traveling through space. This should mean that the energy carried by each punch they throw exceeds the kinetic energy of that of the asteroid. Asteroids can devastate entire cities. However, whenever this character throws a punch, they aren't creating shot waves that devastate entire landscapes. This is known as attack potency or AP. It is the amount of energy carried by an attack, but the energy carried by the attack is not directly proportional to the destruction it causes. Juxtapose this with destructive capability or DC which is generally defined as the amount of destruction an attack can cause or its area of effect. It's pretty self-explanatory, but an example would be if it is stated and shown that a futuristic energy cannon is capable of erasing entire mountains from existence. The approximate amount of energy released by this cannon isn't immediately clear, but its capability for destruction is self-evident. In the real world, AP and DC aren't distinguished to the same degree they are in fiction, but they are still distinguished nonetheless. For example, cracking and pulverizing a stone requires varying in amounts of energy, but the area that is being affected doesn't really change. Moreover, there are different forms of energy and not all of them are destructive. The great distinction in fiction exists as a rationale for the narrative contradictions that would ensue in many cases if we were to hold our physical understandings of many phenomena as immutable. If the aforementioned position were to be held, it would make it so that power scaling as an activity would break because if we don't apply our laws with a little tweaking, we'd have to disregard them entirely which would result in the inability to assign comparable grades between verses because the precise working of phenomena and energy would be unknown. Given that we are using Versus Battle Wiki's definition, allow me to briefly touch on their treatment of DC. They don't really talk about DC that much. They mention and explain it on their attack potency page, but they don't treat it as its own isolated metric that has its own section. Rather, they treat it as an aspect of AP. 
For example, a character destroying a star is said to have star level AP and star level DC. However, if we were to suppose that the destruction of the star was achieved via the ability to destroy stars by just thinking about them, then this character no longer has star level AP. But given DC isn't its own metric, it would not be shown that they have star level DC. Rather, they will classify it as the character's tier. If they were to still classify this in the AP section of the character and just add that it was via environmental destruction, then they would be being disingenuous because it would not be the character's ability to produce a certain level of energy, if not, it's more so the character's ability to manifest effects on reality. Another problem that arises by virtue of not isolating DC as its own metric is that you cannot represent what level of destruction a character can cause irrespective of the amount of energy that they can release. For example, a character can release energy equivalent to a gigaton of TNT with an attack, but that same attack can only destroy a building. Versus Balwiki will classify this character as having large mountain level AP and their tier would be high 7A, but their destructive capability would be unrepresented. Even their range category would not accurately represent it. Not only because it usually lacks the extensive elucidation possessed by other classifications, but also because the attack can have a range of several kilometers, yet will disappear after only affecting several dozen cubic meters. I can continue about the various flaws within Versus Battle Wiki, but that isn't the focus of the video, so let's move on. The classification gap is the gray area in which the definitions of AP and DC cannot differentiate the idea of scaling to attacks and direct power. This gap is filled by the concept I describe as attack power or ATP. Okay, so what does it mean to scale to something? In my opinion, in the context of energy and power, when you scale to something, it means you can exert or withstand a certain level of energy that is produced by an object or entity. You do not inherently scale to things solely due to the fact that you produce them. What I mean by this is that just because you shot a beam of energy that destroyed a planet does not mean your physical body can exert the same level of energy released by the beam in the form of punches and kicks. It also doesn't mean that you can withstand that level of energy or that all your other attacks can release that same level of energy. There is a need for external evidence to validate this assertion and if your only basis for the fact that it was the character who produced it then your reasoning is flawed. Allow me to give an analogy. Just because I pressed the button to launch an intercontinental ballistic missile does not mean that my physical body can exert or withstand the amount of energy released by this missile. A related analogy would be to exchange the act of pressing the button with the act of creating the missile and the launching mechanism. Producing an effect on reality via supernatural means doesn't inherently mean that your physical body skills to the energy released by this effect. There just isn't anything that says this or valid reason to believe this for fiction in general. You also can't be like, this character became exhausted after using this attack. Thus they scale to it because it's evident that they used a vast amount of energy to produce this attack. Just because the generation of an attack or phenomenon on reality requires you to input a certain level of energy doesn't inherently mean that the output is relative to the input as the mechanism by which it is achieved must be taken into consideration. The reason for this is that just because a certain level of energy is required to activate an effect does not mean the energy possessed by the effect is the same, as one would have to suppose that it is a direct transformation of energy rather than an activation of an ability. We can use the same analogy of pressing a button to launch a nuke. There is some input of energy which would be pressing the button, but the output is infinitely greater due to the mechanism by which it is achieved. To give an example in fiction, let's suppose the following propositions. One. I have the ability to destroy basically any object by conceptualizing its destruction. 2. When I use this ability, it drains such a vast amount of my stamina that I can only use the ability about 10 times a day. 3. I am a regular human, however I can destroy entire stars and galaxies by using this ability. 4. If I want to destroy something like a star, then it would drain a greater amount of my stamina compared to if I wanted to destroy something like a TV. However, the difference in the drain of stamina between destroying the two objects is not directly proportional to any of your physical attributes. All of these propositions can be true without violating the law of non-contradiction, i.e. they are not mutually exclusive. 
Due to this, I can destroy galaxies but still not physically scale to their destruction while also becoming extremely tired from using this ability. The sole fact that energy is drained when an effect is being generated or energy is required for the manifestation of that effect does not mean that one scales to the effect unless there are externalities that show or imply it. People seem to think that these things are mutually exclusive when they aren't which causes them to assume a one to one ratio between the amount of energy that is inputted versus the amount of energy that is outputted. This also isn't something that is limited to just complex mind hacks. This principle applies to any type of attack, even if it's an energy beam. It's just that with stuff like energy beams, many externalities exist to assert that a character scales to them. Again, without externalities showing or implying it, you cannot assert someone scales to an attack solely due to the fact that they produced it. With this in mind, we can move on to explaining what I mean by direct power. I define direct power as the ability to impact a specific object, usually a sentient, human-like or human-sized being with a specific level of energy. To exemplify what I mean, let's assume the following propositions. 1. A character has two abilities. One of them is called Scarlet Blast and the other one is called Crimson Eruption. 2. Scarlet Blast is the ability to shoot beams of energy that have a radius of 2 meters with a range of 100 meters. 3. Crimson Eruption is the ability to release energy omnidirectionally for a radius of 100 kilometers. 4. Both of these abilities have a yield of 1 full, which is 1 times 10 to the power of 44 joules. With this in mind, allow me to ask the following questions. 1. Which of these attacks has more destructive capability? It is self-evident that Crimson Eruption does because of its greater area of effect. 2. Which of these attacks has a greater attack potency? Well, neither. They both release the same amount of energy. 3. Which of these attacks is capable of damaging a specific individual to a greater degree? Well, it's obvious that it would be the Scarlet Blast because it concentrates its energy into a much smaller area while Crimson Eruption wastes a vast amount of its direct damaging ability due to releasing its energy in all directions. This is why I propose the idea of ATP, as both Crimson Eruption and Scarlet Blast have the same AP, but this does not accurately reflect their ability to harm another character. So just saying that a character has planet level AP doesn't mean they can harm a character with planet level durability or that if they were to clash with someone with planet level AP, they will cancel out each other as the energy output isn't the only variable to consider. One must also consider in what way this energy can be imparted. The reason I previously explained the idea of scaling to attacks is because some people will go like this. Given that X is an attack that scales to Y and character A survived X, character A should scale to Y. The problem with this reasoning is that it doesn't delve into how X scales to Y and it doesn't consider the way X works. This is precisely why surviving an explosion doesn't mean you scale to the yield of the explosion as you didn't withstand all of the energy it released. You only withstood the amount of energy that hit your surface area. For those who tread versus battle wiki, my explanation of ATP may sound similar to their underused concept of striking strength. But the way they differentiate is that striking strength seems to only apply to things like punches and kicks, while my proposal of attack power extends into any kind of attack that affects a single target and releases energy of course. Let's take Ichigo for example. Versus Battle Wiki wouldn't consider his Gesuga Tensho as striking strength but it would be classified by me as a part of his ATP. In summary, attack power is the amount of energy carried by an attack whose area of effect is limited to single targets. It can range from things such as punches and kicks all the way up to energy blast. You can somewhat erroneously simplify it as attack power with a minor area of effect. Its purpose is to accurately gauge a character's strength in cross verse matchups because if a character has planet level ATP, they can hit another character with energy equivalent to the planet level tier as defined by versus battle wiki. Attack power and destructive capability cannot do this, as omnidirectional attacks or attacks with large areas of effect cannot impart all or a majority of their energy onto singular targets. 
ATP can also be used to refer to the idea of just scaling to attacks, where rather than a single attack being able to impart a certain level of energy onto single targets, the character themselves can release a certain level of energy onto single targets in the form of punches and kicks, while also, but not inherently, being able to withstand that same amount of energy. And yeah, that's about it. Bye.